Okay, here we go. We're going to talk about um, last time. We talked about curved grade, uh, curved grades. Is that true? Okay. Grades that were curved. And if you guys remember, what was that curve based on? The curve is based on the what? This value, which is the mean, and what else? What other value? You had a whole lecture on that last time, so. Nope, never. Not the high. Don't get, don't, uh 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 uh. Highest value, lowest value, get that out of your head. It's based on what again? The mean and the? Standard deviation. If you go through life thinking that that's the curve, that's not a curve. Okay? This is the curve. It's based on the center and how consistent your data is. Remember that? Okay, and I think we even did this. We drew a picture. What did we draw? In the center, you had what? The mean, that's the center of your data. What else? You had this first interval. I take the mean and what do I do here? Add the standard deviation and I what? Subtract the standard deviation. So this creates an interval known as what? What's the name of that interval? This interval is where the what? This is, this is being with, within one standard deviation, within one standard deviation of the center, the mean. And if I create the interval here, where you have two standard deviations now, well, then that's going to be called what? An interval where you're within two standard deviations of the mean. This is what we did last time. Now, in the center here, what grades did you get if your score was about the mean or the center? People there got a C. Is that right? If it was above one standard deviation, but less than two standard deviations, what did you get here? And if you were more than two standard deviations, you got a what? A, is that true? If you were below the mean, more than one standard deviation, but less than two, what kind of grade did you get? A D. And more than two standard deviations, you get a? Fantastic, okay? This was the curve. Now, I'm going to call this next process the generalization of the curve because that's, that's sort of what it is. And to generalize something, I'm going to have to change some notation for you. Okay, in other words, I'm going to give you what's known as the z value, z score, it's also known as the standard score or standard value. Okay, standard score, standard value. And the z value is found by taking a data value, subtracting the mean, and dividing by the standard deviation. OK? OK, and this is how this all works. What happens is this. If I plug in any mean for a data set, here. Can you guys tell me what happens to that z-score, that value here? x is an arbitrary data value. This is the mean, standard deviation. What's the mean minus the mean? Zero. Zero divided by any number is what? So what happens here when we standardize this scale, that mean is always zero. Okay? You're going to see how this works. If I plug in the mean plus a standard deviation now, by algebra, adding like terms, the mean minus the mean is what? This is gone. You have a standard deviation divided by a standard deviation. What, what does that give you? 
This is algebra. What's s divided by s? 1. Good. What if I plug in two standard deviations? Okay. The means still cancel, and you get 2s divided by s. What's that? 2. Good. So you see how we're sort of generalizing this? That 0 corresponds to being at the center, the mean. 1 corresponds to being at this one standard deviation from the mean. Above the mean, it's positive 1. Positive 2, you are what? This is the two standard deviations. Go back here. What if I plug in this mean minus s? The means cancel. What's negative s divided by s? Negative 1. Plug in here the mean minus 2s, and what do you get now? What's the mean minus the mean? That's gone. Negative 2s divided by s is what? Negative 2. Now, here's what's happening. This is, the, this is your standard scale now, your generalization z scale 0, 1, 2, negative 1, negative 2. And we're going to talk about now why we actually approach it this way. Why do we have to generalize things? Well, because, for example, um, although this scale that you see here works well for grading on a curve, it doesn't work well for every phenomena that you want to describe. For example, you guys know the height of min. The height of min. Um, do you want to know what's the mean height of min? Do you guys know? How tall are men on average? Six foot? No. It's five eight. How did you know? How okay. How many inches is five eight? Sixty eight, thank you. Six eight inches. Now I'm going by memory here. This is just an example. I'm going by memory, and my memory was that. The standard deviation was uh, 2.9 inches. Okay? So men on average are 5 feet 8. Standard deviation is 2.9. Okay? Let's try to determine some z scores or z values for various people, right? All right, let's see. Does anybody know? Mr. Judge is what? How many inches tall? Be careful. <laughs> yes. How many inches is that? 67 inches tall. OK. What is my z value? Let's determine my z value. The z value is going to be that data value. What's the data value? 67 minus, what's the mean here? What's the mean? 68, good. Divided by the standard deviation s, what's that? Is that 2.9? OK, what is my z value, my z score, or the standard score? That's where your calculator comes in, I guess, right? Approximate that to the nearest oh, hundredth, two decimal places. What do you get? 2.34? Nope. Z uh, is that positive or is it negative? Negative what? 0 0.34. Negative 0 0.34. So stop and think about this score for a second. On the standard scale here, the z scale here, right? Where is a negative 0 0.34? Where, where would that live? Anybody know? It lives where? Well, first of all, 